Right. Hi guys, awesome. I remember really well what I wrote down in the feedback form at the end of Brugan 2011. I wrote that I would be really interested in just a recap of everything that happened in the security world that day. Because it's really hard to keep up with everything, right? It's really hard to keep up with everything that happens day after day. A question, who, ta who of you uh, has sometimes the feeling that they miss out on what's happening day after day? Who has the feeling that they sometimes miss out? Raise your hands if you sometimes have the feeling that in you're in a conversation and a colleague or a friend says, ah, oh, yeah, that vulnerability, uh, that new technique, yeah, that's really interesting, huh? that's really interesting. And you go like, yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. But deep inside, you're panicking and thinking, what the fuck was that again? <laughs> oh, what the fuck was that again? <laughs> so raise your hand if you ever had in that situation that you said, yeah, 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 yeah. Indeed, everybody has it. Take off my jacket. Sorry. <laughs> I will do just that. Voila. All right, we can go further. So, I'm very glad that 12 years later, I'll be, I'm able uh, to give the talk myself. Eh? The one that I wrote in the feedback form, I'm very glad to be given the opportunity to give it myself. And so let's do exactly that. Let's do a recap of what happened the past year. Who am I? Well, I'm Dieter van den Bos, and I love Brucon and just about everything geeky. And for us dinosaur geeks, I know, don't freak out, uh, I'm touching that dinosaur that's 68 million years ago, but it's a replica. It's a replica. It's hanging in a hotel, a really cool hotel. It has a lot of replicas. It's the best western in Denver. Really cool, a lot of uh, cool replicas there. Um, I'm since 2009 in security in a financial services company um, that uh, is with 42,000 people uh, where I, for example, started the SOC and uh, recently I did the, tr uh, I was threat intelligence analyst and global lead in attack service management, external attack service management. And actually now I'm the founder of Threat Exposure. That's an external attack service management company. So what we do is we check the outside of companies um, to see if there's vulnerabilities there. And we're mostly specialized, really specialized in finding zero days. So as soon as a vulnerability, a critical vulnerability emerges, it often happens that I'm 15 minutes later on the phone with some IT guy, with some, somebody responsible saying, okay, you need to shut down that system right now or it will be exploited just like any other, any other of those systems that are mass exploited. So really focused on um, those new zero days as they emerge. Let's start our story exactly, but really exactly a year ago on Brucon 2022. On the Brucon party, which is by the way this evening again, at Thiel Malin uh, here uh, in Mechelen. And at 2.30 at night I come back at home and Franklin from the volunteers uh, he sent in a Slack chat saying there's a new vulnerability. The new vulnerability is called Proxy Not Shell. You might have heard of it. It's a zero day in Microsoft Exchange Server again. Indeed, uh, you know what's coming because actually to tell the whole story, we need to go back, back in time. Because Proxy Logon happened in 2021. Proxy Logon a Chinese state-sponsored APT uh, hacked tens of thousands of networks worldwide, according to the White House. It's a Chinese state-sponsored APT. By the way, I need somebody to keep count on how many times I will say that in this presentation. And I'm serious, who wants to keep count? Yeah, you? Okay, thank you. Uh, please keep count. It's not that much, but anyway, it's fun to do. So, proxy shell happened in August 2021. The same exact thing again in RCE in Microsoft Exchange Server. Again, mass exploited by multiple threat actors. So, back to exactly a year ago, Kevin Beaumont, Gossy the Dog, really famous security researcher, he writes 
this block. He says, it appears that the proxy shell patches from early 2021 did not fix the issue. I'm calling this proxy not shell because of that reason. And there are currently no patches. So Microsoft didn't issue any patches. They did issue a mitigation. The mitigation is a pattern that uh, tries to block exploits. So if an HTTP request that comes in like that, with that pattern, uh, then you have to block that HTTP request. That's the mitigation that Microsoft uh, gives the only way to secure yourself. Three days later, uh, unfortunately, it was bypassed. Bypassed from this guy from Vietnam. Um, he bypassed it and he, w he wrote it on Twitter. Everybody knew on Twitter. It took Microsoft a day, more than a day to fix it. Uh, yeah, a day of radio silence, silence from Microsoft. In the end, they fixed the bypass, and um, what is really not that good is that they com didn't communicate it properly. So they didn't say uh, the mitigation was easily bypassable, or that I scripted the other way to, to do the bypass, not uh, to do the mitigation, has changed. So actually, I'm counting already three fuck-ups. One, they didn't patch it uh, with proxy shell. They didn't patch it right. Two, they didn't uh, patch it this time. They just have a mitigation, and that mitigation is bypassable. And three, um, they didn't communicate it properly. They keep it kind of quiet. They didn't at least communicate it like they should. One day later, there's a bypass of the mitigation to the bypass of the mitigation. One day it took them. Two days later, there's another bypass to the mitigation to the bypass to the mitigation to the bypass to the mitigation. That's, uh, yeah, they, they always take, Microsoft fixes it every time. They take their time. You would think uh, it's bypassable, unbypassable, bulletproof, but uh, the, some guys on Twitter always prove them wrong. But you have to imagine the sheer panic with those, uh, with those admins, with those service admins, because they have to fix the server every time. They have to sh they have do a change and pray to the gods, nothing happens. Just imagine their panic. So, um, you would think Microsoft fixes it. Two days later, again, a new bypass to the mitigation, a new uh, mitigation by Microsoft. One month and six fuck-ups later, it's 8th of November, and Microsoft has finally released their patch. Ah, the end. Right. Right. December 3. Microsoft applied mitigations for proxy not shell or bypassable. Again, Microsoft just haven't told you this clearly. True story, Microsoft were told, but they chose not to communicate it. Microsoft probably was thinking, chill, what's the worst that could happen, right? But actually, the title of the blog is Rackspace Suffers Destructive Security Breach. They do have impact. Uh, Rackspace points the finger to Microsoft, I think, in a corre uh, correct way. I, I agree with them, because Microsoft had new patches in November, um, six of them, and they didn't say which one was um, was important, which not. They didn't say, okay, you really, you really, you really need to um, patch these vulnerabilities. It was in the patch Tuesday of Microsoft, and as you know, sometimes there are 120 vulnerabilities in patch Tuesday. So, which one to fix, which one not? Vexpace should have fixed it, but I don't blame them. I do blame Microsoft. To this date, by the way. Microsoft still says so, that it's not exploited. It's their policy, I don't understand it, but they still say it's not exploited. However, it is exploited a lot because it's called OWA SSRF. It's, uh, like I said, it's a um, yeah, it bypasses the mitigation that uh, we got earlier. It's, and it's been done by Play, the Play ransomware group. Does that name ring a bell? Who knows? <laughs> Go ahead. Exactly, the city of Antwerp. Only four days later, actually, the same ransomware group hacked the city of Antwerp. 
did ransomware. And um, Antwerp says it has uh, an impact of 70 million euros. At least, uh, yeah, it could be as high as that number. And indeed, people from Antwerp, I guess, are in here. There is a, they have a blog that they have to, at this point, 10 months later, have to update every week or every 10 days to uh, show uh, which systems are still offline, which are online. 10 months later. Was, um, was it also OWA SSRF back then? Well, I, ha I have an internal source that does say so, that it was indeed four days later after Rackspace was got hit with OWA SSRF, uh, city of Antwerp also got hit with that. If that's true, I don't blame, An don't blame Antwerp, but I do blame Microsoft. It's a wrap. This time the story is over. Uh, this time it's we're at the end of that story. But in between those events, some other stuff happened. For example, the critical bug in OpenSSL v3. Who remembers, who, who remembers that one? Uh, a, couple of the, a couple of you, a couple of you. Because if you would remember it, then you would remember it was really a panic back then. It was said to be a hard bleed level bug, a critical bug. Um, and after a week, the OpenSSL guys said, yeah, I know there's a lot of uh, panic on Twitter. Actually, it's a, just a high bug, not a critical bug. And it's almost impossible to exploit. So it's officially the winner of the most overhyped bug of the year. With a runner-up, an honorable mention of text for shell for shell, every vulnerability this year or nowadays has to have a name for shell behind it. November 16, something that really didn't get enough attention, I think, because uh, it's a Belgian thing, it's not international, and therefore it didn't get that much attention. The ransomware event at the Belgian company Zwijndrecht. That's how Regner Locker, the ransomware group, said it. What they didn't know is that it was actually the police of Zwijndrecht. The police of Zwijndrecht reacted. They said, ah, oh, but it's only administrative, uh, the, only the administrative network. It's only personnel, uh, it's mainly personnel stuff. It's no, not the police network that's uh, been hacked. Uh, personnel party, stuff like that. Data from the personnel party and uh, things like that. I think they didn't know themselves what was leaked because in reality, what happened was a thousand, more a thousands of police investigation reports like that had been leaked, thousands for free on the internet with details, details, really details you don't want to have on the internet, like uh, pictures of sh a child that was molested, things like that, really details. And uh, four weeks ago, another batch was released, another batch was uh, uploaded by Ragnar Locker. It contained, yeah, they say, 46 gigabytes of phone call logs, phone call logs of criminal investigations with uh, the location where it's from, the names and stuff like that. Really from criminal investigations, 46 gigabytes worth of phone calls, phone call logs. Um, a VTM news guy, a news, news reporter, he said that they came in via uh, a Citrix server with a relatively easy to uh, uh, guess password. That's reportedly how they got in. And yeah, it's debatable. I think we should definitely open the discussion if we should trust. And so now cameras are everywhere in the cities, in the, on the streets, on the roads, cameras are everywhere. Do we trust and should we trust that local police can secure, has the expertise to secure all these things? something to think about. Then, Shared GPT got released. I don't have, um, I, I'm not going to say anything actually about Shared GPT and AI, but I do have a message from someone who will. Hi, Brucon 2023. This is Snoop Dogg. Dieter van den Bosch asked me to say, 
Everybody else is already talking about AI. So, Gita thinks he doesn't need to cover it in his talk. And besides, AI is going to take over the world anyway. Ah uh, yes, and have fun on the Brucon party this evening. It's just too hard to uh, summarize everything that happened in AI this year. It was just too hard. I didn't even try. And AI is going to take over <laughs> the world anyway. The Belgian city of Diest also got a, a ransomware a, a attack. And on 13th of December, there was a zero day in Citrix Netscaler. Netscale device is actually the ADC and the gateway uh, systems. So a zero day uh, exploited by a state-sponsored Chinese hacking group. And on July 18th, actually this year, uh, this summer, quite recently, I think one of the biggest hacks uh, of this year happened. It was again in the Citrix ADC gateways. Um, web Fox IT actually, they found web shells on around 2,000 systems, 2,000 Citrix systems all over the world. Actually, not all over the world. What's really interesting is they, Vox IT didn't find web shells in Canada, US, and Russia. What's up with that? So we can only theorize why they didn't do it, but it's really, really a big hack. And then 16 August, August they had a new one uh, in New Zero Day. The last pass hack. Uh, again, so much things happened, it's almost impossible to summarize. Uh, last pass hack on December 22. Our customers' passwords remain safely encrypted due to last pass zero day, zero knowledge architecture. Zero day, zero day architecture would be more <laughs> appropriate. Because it proved totally to be untrue, uh, because Otherwise, how would you explain the 35 million in, uh, dollar in crypto already stolen from more than 150 confirmed victims? It is circumstantial evidence because the only thing that those 150 people got uh, in common is the fact that they had LastPass and that their secrets to the crypto, their crypto was in LastPass. So it's circumstantial, not direct evidence, but still uh, the, yeah, the link is probably, who knows, there. Then, who knows about that? T-Mobile was breached uh, this year for the eighth time since 2018. For the eighth time. 37 million personal records were stolen this time. And um, in March, they were hacked by the for the ninth <laughs> time. Crazy. On February 15th, there was a new Belgian law, as you probably have known, as the first country in the world. Uh, we now allow hackers to search for vulnerabilities in company networks. And without their approval, but what's really important is that there are a lot of rules you actually do have to follow to make sure you are ethical. You are uh, really, really ethical. Because if you forget one rule, you're illegal again, and yeah, you can go to jail if you really go too far. Uh, but that's really an interesting uh, new law that Belgium was the first or second country to do that. Journalists opens USB bomb in newsroom. What? True story, five uh, Ecuadorian journalists received USB sticks. One journalist inserted it in the newsroom and it exploded in his face. The USB stick contained, contained explosives that detonated when it was connected to five volts. There was one guy, one journalist, that also did it. They connected the USB stick to a USB extender. And that USB extender just didn't provide enough voltage and that's why it didn't go off. That moment when your life is saved by a faulty Chinese <laughs> USB cable. 
by the way, you cannot subtract one point for China this time because I made it up uh, that it was a Chinese cable. March 15th, a zero day in Outlook. Uh, all it allowed hackers to remotely um, get the hash password of the victims just by sending them a mail. And that, that was a targeted attack by APT28 slash fancy bear slash strontium slash unit 26165 from the GRU. GRU um, is the military intelligence. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, yeah, for example, Sandworm is also part of it. Sandworm really known. They uh, are known for NotPetya, Indestroyer 2, Indestroyer 1, of course, um, a lot of Vipers. So GRU does a lot of things that you would think that the military does, a lot of impactful stuff, but they also do targeted, low impactful stuff, or yeah, not that impactful. So that's the GRU. That's, uh, in this case, Fancy Bear APT28. It was a Microsoft patch. So on May 11th, the patch was bypassed. And Microsoft patched it again. March 17, the owner of Breach Firm was arrested. The owner, it was a, it's a really, really known underground forum. A lot of things are on, a lot of data is for sale there. Also get leaked for free. A lot of script kiddies are on there as well. Really big forum. It turned out to be a 20-year-old from New York. Law enforcement got their hand on a chat message. What did this guy, uh, how did he get caught? He chatted to another cyber criminal. Hey, your leak, um, it doesn't contain this email address and, and have I been pwned that the same leak contains, does contain that email address. And that email address is my first name, last name, 2002 at gmail.com. So, he gave away his real email address. He pled guilty, and the maximum penalty is 40 years of imprisonment. It hasn't been decided yet. Another thing that's really interesting that happened was UK ran fake DDoS for higher sites. Um, in March, they came out, they published it, that they did it to, um, so yeah, to get contacts, to, know, to get a contact from the criminal underground. So people, uh, ask those sites, please do a DDoS on, on that organization. But in re reality, it was actually the UK, the National Crime Agency themselves. Really interesting trend. Um, nowadays, yeah, the hacking, the, the law enforcement are much more active. They do much more offensive stuff. And this is part of the, the, that active role they're taking up. Um, and also they do, for example, um, take down malware, take down ransomware, um, uh, yeah, servers and stuff like that. That's really a new trend of this year. It's really clear that they started really shifting to the next gear. Make love, not war. Ukrainian hackers sent surprise delivery of 25,000 euros. What happened? Ukrainian hackers hacked into the account of a Z volunteer who was raising money to buy drones uh, for the Russian army, but they ordered sex toys for him. For him. So instead, he wanted, he wanted to send drones to the Russian army. Instead, he can now send strap-ons and dildos. The at for for twenty-five thousand euros, eh? Just imagine it, just imagine it. And the guy actually, he minimized it and he said, ah, no problem, I will just get a refund. I will just get a refund. And he later said the refund failed. So just imagine, ting, ting dong, here are 25,000 uh, euros worth of sex toys. Maybe this picture is more appropriate Hackers can be a real pain in the ass. <laughs> and um, there was a random guy on Twitter that said about this, this guy deserves a monument. This, it's this legend deserves a monument. A giant butt plug must be erected <laughs> in his honor. 
Please do not hack me. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, it's just uh, that's what happens, of course, when you get uh, propaganda all the time. You uh, this these kind of fans uh, is the result. March May 9th, actually, Snake uh, got taken down. Uh, like I said, it was a trend that law enforcement is now taking down malware and stuff like that. Well, Snake was actually the most sophisticated cyber espionage tool operate, and it was oper in the world and it was operated by Center 16 of the FSB. Again, FSB is the uh, federal intelligence service, so the internal intelligence server of service of Russia. They are responsible for the intelligence in Russia itself and for ex-Soviet countries like Ukraine. So really important. Uh, ex it, they are the ex-KGB, by the way. So they ran Snake, uh, really advanced. And you can see just in, uh, it was an explanation of how it worked. And you could see the FBI, oh, I, this is how it works. This is, oh, this is really cool how that worked. And this is how that worked. It was really uh, saying goodbye to an old friend. That's what you can really read uh, in the report that the FBI made. The Barracuda Zero Day. That was also very interesting for, uh, for at least for one really interesting thing that happened there. Barracuda had a zero day in their ESG devices, email security gateways. Um, it had a zero day. It was revealed that, um, yeah, 10 days later, it was revealed that at least seven months it was already being hacked, it was already being used. It stayed under the radar, nobody knew about it, so that must be really advanced. And one uh, Mandiant actually discovered that Chinese state-sponsored APT crew was behind it. And uh, actually it's UNC4841. UNC stands for uncategorized because they didn't, don't know yet which, yeah, which cyber unit is behind it. Uh, just like Microsoft does with Storm, if they use Storm, or they used to say DEF, and then a number, that's uncategorized uh, APT, uncategorized threat actor. So one week later, Barracuda says all appliances must be replaced immediately. Immediately, and even those that are already patched. That never has happened before, never. So what happened? After Barracuda published the, yeah, the, 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 that there was a zero day, that it was, uh, there was a critical vulnerability, the guys just took new malware to, and, and, and used that to be more persistent. They just, uh, they apparently, they really prepared in advance because uh, they just took new, new malware and yeah, tried, to, to get, tried to get even more uh, persistent. And I think that is badass, this kind of badass. Because the whole world is watching, and they, instead of stopping, they say, okay, let's go next level on them and dig in. That's really badass. And that, that means also a future prediction. As you know, this will not stop. Why would they stop? The advantages are way more, uh, they have way more advantages than disadvantages. Why would they stop if they dare this? Mandiant also says, it's likely that we will continue to observe Chinese cyber espionage operations targeting edge infrastructure with zero-day vulnerabilities. This will not stop. Also a prediction, Paracuda urges to replace the ESGs. They say throw it out and get a new one. Many companies will actually say throw it out and don't get a new one. So, really interesting story. Thousands, thousands of really expensive ESGs have been turned into really expensive doorstops. Club and the massive Move It massacre. Let me explain first who Club is. Club is TA505. Um, Club is a ransomware group, it's part of a bigger cybercrime organization. Uh, it's the, one of the most prolific cybercrime organizations in the world, TA505. CISA estimates that they have compromised more than 8,000 of uh, organizations worldwide. In December 2020, CLOP breached up to 100 companies 
using a RCE, remote code execution vulnerability, in Excellion's file transfer plans. They did the exact same thing in July 2021, but then with uh, SolarWinds SurveView file transfer devices. They did, did it exactly the same thing, January 2023, with Go Anywhere managed file transfer devices. They say they uh, exfiltrated data from approximately 130 victims in 10 days. They probably think never change a winning formula and the trend to buy zero days by ransomware groups is clear. Kasi the dog, again, uh, Kevin Beaumont actually, huh? that's his nickname, he said about this, turns out letting ransomware groups make hundreds of millions to reinvest in exploits is a bad idea. And indeed, it's a bad idea because in June 1st, they did it again. And if you ask me, this is the biggest hack of the past year. Uh, yeah, it's, they did exactly the same thing, but this time they were prepared. Prepared uh, and they hacked a lot. Because the, the, the move it transfer uh, the appliances, this was uh, hacked this time. This was a zero day. That, that's where they now entered this. That's now the one that they exploited. And it's been used by thousands of governments. So it's a really popular device, even though I guess many of you, and I didn't also, didn't know it. Later it was revealed that the scanning already started in March, so they really prepared. Shell was one of the first victims. Ernst & Young, PwC, uh, Deutsche Bank and ING, both through a service, prov service provider, uh, also through a service provider. So a, a third party with data of them, uh, BBC, British Airways, American Airlines, and many, many more. Sony was also hacked. MCSoft says more than 2,000 organizations have been impacted this summer. And I think it's actually way more because every week uh, we have uh, uh, many more, many more organizations. Coverware estimates club earns, earned, of earns, will earn between 75 and 100 million dollars with this massive Move It massacre. Club stole personal data of 56 million individuals. We kind of get used to it, eh? but think about it. It's like the country of Belgium, but then five times. That many people that got really sensitive, or often really sensitive data leaked. And not just any data. For example, this one is data of uh, really health data, their diagnosis, their social security number, their full names, four million people that just uh, your, your, yeah, your diagnosis is, is public. Wow. This is the message on their leak site. It's on Tor, their leak site. Um, they had so many victims that they said, I think they just didn't have a list of, of all victims. They said, if you had move it and you want to pay, contact us. They just had too many victims. Uh, so if you have move it, contact us. And what's also strange is that the deadline to contact them was first June 12th. Uh, first when I took that screenshot, it was June 12th. Later when I took that screenshot, it changed to June 14th. They yeah, didn't have time, they had too many victims. Or there's been speculation that they maybe forgot June 12th, that they didn't want to work on June 12th because it's a Russian national holiday. Who knows? They had so many victims that they um, needed to start a new site to leak their data um, in the clear web. Even when that didn't work, they started leaking it with torrent. And really, uh, yeah, they just had too much data to leak. Poor them. <laughs> Fortinet. It's not been the year for Fortinet because they had five zero days since last Brucon. Five. Um, I will not go into detail, but it often was with the SSL VPN uh, servers. And who's keeping count of the APT, uh, Chinese APT? How many do we have? Five. Five. Oh, I thought. What? 
Uh, Russian, I also said a lot, indeed, indeed. Uh, but uh, they are kind of preoccupied with some other stuff this year. Uh, so we had five, count three more, because there are three hacking campaigns this year uh, by Russian, uh, by Chinese state-sponsored APT groups uh, with Fortinet. Needless to say, this meme went viral. Why is it when something happens, it's always U3? Indeed, this really went viral for the right reason. Who knows this guy? Yeah. You know the story, yeah? You know what, we know, you know what I'm going to say. That's Kevin Mitnick. And he passed away at 59 in July. And he's a really, he's a, he's, he's a hacker hero. He's a hacker, he's a legend. He's the OG of hackers. Um, yeah, he, 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 in July 16th, he passed away at 59 due to pancreatic cancer. And his wife um, was pregnant with their first child. Why is he a, really a legend? Well, that's because um, in the 80s and, and 90s, he was already hacking a lot. He was hacking Sun Microsystems, they're stealing their source code, so source code um, which are, uh, um, it's on the tip of my tongue, uh, Motorola, he, he, he also hacked, he, he got, he leaked, he, got, he downloaded their uh, source code. He even eavesdropped, he eavesdropped on FBI calls. Um, and, he, and why did he do it? For fun. He did it. No, uh, not for, for profit, but to learn from it. So he did do real hacking, so he's a legend but he also did the time for all the real crimes he did. Eh? So that's also important, of course. Uh, he did do the time, he did spend two years and a half in prison. Afterwards, he became a, uh, yeah, a, a consultant and a speaker. And his book, uh, Ghost in the Wires, I really can rec recommend if you want to read about his story. Recently, we learned more about the compromised Microsoft keys. A Chinese cyber espionage group, Storm, 558 five, found the signing keys in a crash dump, as you might have heard uh, recently. It's a Chinese cyber espionage group, uh, so yeah, you don't have to count it. It's they had to see it's a uh, yeah because Mandiant, I don't know actually which who says it, but it's not officially a state-sponsored hacking group yet. Um, it's a cyber espionage. Who would do cyber espionage? Okay, but. It's not officially yet, and that's important. July 25th, an event, the Mobile Iron Zero Day. What happened? They had an admin API. Normally, you ask a password and authentication when you uh, have an admin API. This one was accessible for everybody without authentication. Who needs authentication for your admin API anyway? Then, the last story of today. The last story of today is about Trickbot, Conti, and Wizard Spider. It's the same name for the same group. And this year, actually in September, U US and UK sanctioned this year 18 individuals of, the, uh, of that group. And they, um, they kind of dox them like they do. Uh, they put their name public, name public, their picture, their place where they live, their email address. Um, uh, it's, it's public now. And the TrickBot crew is one of the biggest cybercrime, not gangs, but really companies in the world. Because why do I say companies? Well, that's because they have an HR department, an R&D department, a finance manager, and they even do uh, job evaluation reviews. Crazy. And they also um, they do have a physical office where some of them at least sit. At some point in time, they were with 81 people. Some say they now evolved to even have more people, but I don't have any uh, confirmation on that. So, let's end our story. Let's end our story with Brucon this year. Let's maybe end it on 
BrewCon party. Let's uh, see each other at the BrewCon party this evening. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions? I have a question. Yeah? Oh, you already I have, have a uh, mic. I, I already <laughs> have a mic, eh? yeah. I have a question. How many did you count? Eight. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Oh, there any questions from the break room? No questions here. Oh, he has a question. Thank you, really interesting talk. Um, how do you keep up with the latest uh, zero days of vulnerabilities? Some yeah. kind of newsletters or something? Can you share some uh, yeah, yeah, tips? Yeah, indeed, indeed. Uh, I put a lot of uh, sources already in the slides, so that's uh, to those I can recommend. Um, security newsletter is a friend of mine, Dieter van der Stock. Um, when I wrote the feedback form that I wanted uh, to have a, uh, uh, talk about what happened, I actually was sitting next to Dieter van der Stock. <laughs> uh, and he's, that's the best security newsletter that I know, securitynewsletter.co, I think. So that's really good. Um, uh, books like Sandworm is a really good book with a lot of the history of, of, um, of cyber warfare. Really good book that I recommend. Uh, a lot of um, a podcast. Uh, are really good. Um, uh, sec uh, security now, if you have a lot of time, um, I, I, listened, I have listened to it a, a lot uh, for many years. Um, Whiskey Biz uh, and the most famous one, Darknet Diaries. Uh, it's really, it's really awesome. The podcast, uh, Leaping Computer, is also really good. They produce their own content. Um, yeah, so many, so many sources are really good. Thank you.